talk to you about painting a rock. Now, lots of people paint rocks and do really intricate, really involved designs. We aren't gonna do that. We're gonna do something that anybody can do. We're gonna do something that's fun, like a bug, or pretty, like a flower, or something you wanna say to one of your friends, uh, you're just special in some way. You can, if you feel like you can, you can paint landscapes. I'm not the best at this, so that's not the best. You can put drawings of things on them. At the end of the video, we'll show you a montage of pictures of what other people have done to paint rocks. I got started and got hooked on painted rocks with this one. One of my students, I bet 20 years ago, painted this and gave it to me. And I just, I've kept it, I cherish it, and it is surprising to you, to people, what, what, how much this, something like this can mean. So think about it, you might wanna paint a rock. You start with rocks of all sizes and shapes. A lot of people think they have to be smooth and round, but they don't necessarily have to be. If you're getting ready to do something like this, you want to collect rocks. You can go take a field trip. Your family can take a field trip, take down some country roads, stop at some streams, look for some rocks that way. You wanna be careful of going through weeds or being on somebody's private property. But if you know somebody who has a creek near their house, that's an ideal thing to do. If going on a field trip to find rocks is just not really uh, something you can do, you can go to the hardware store and get a bag of landscape rocks. I painted some rocks earlier this year when we were down in Key West. When we first started shutting down for the virus, I decided I was gonna paint some rocks and pass them out and put them on people's porches and different places to kind of give them some inspiration, some hope, some encouragement as we're going through this pandemic. When I decided I wanted to paint these rocks in, in, in Key West, the only rocks down there were really rough coral rocks and they weren't really good to paint. So I went to the hardware store and I bought a bag of rocks. Now, whether you get your, bo uh, your rocks in a bag or whether you go and get them out of the creek, wash them when you get them home. Take an old toothbrush, take a scrub brush, scrub them off because the, you want to get the dirt and the dust and anything that's on your rock off of your rock, okay? And then get your stuff together. I have here uh, all kinds of uh, acrylic paint, craft paint, artist paint, whatever is acrylic paint that sticks best to the rock. I got an assortment of brushes because you'll wanna do lots of different, you know, you want different sizes for different things. And down in Key West, I put words on my rocks and I used a paintbrush and I'll be honest with you, uh, it was hard. The best thing if you wanna put a word on a rock is a Sharpie pen. You can also draw details. If you're not good on drawing eyes or antennas, if you're making a little bug or something, use a Sharpie. Okay, you got everything ready. You got a cup with water, a paper plate, put your paint on, you got paint brushes, you got paint, you're ready to go. I'm gonna show you a couple different things. I'm gonna show you, today we're gonna to paint a flower and we're gonna paint a bug and I'm gonna show you how to paint a perfect heart every time and how to make a star every time, okay? And Jessie is going to see if I'm a good teacher. She's gonna see if I can do this right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the, with the flower because the flower, you have to paint the petals and then you have to let it dry. And that's true with several things, several of these designs. So I would suggest you paint more than one rock at a time. I'm gonna start with some white paint. Some of these paint bottles have been around this house a long time. I'm gonna, there's some white if you want white, but I'm gonna make my flower pink, so I'm gonna put a little pink with it too. Make a real pale pink. 
It's okay to mix colors. Pale pink, you start with white and you put a little bit of your color in there. Now I wanted to read a pink flower. So I wanna have enough on there. You found a brush that'll work for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, to paint the petals to a flower, I start with the outside of the petal and pull towards the center. I'm just gonna put a dot in the middle that says this is where the center of my flower is gonna be. Because then I can put all my pet pull all my petals towards it. And I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. And make sure I have enough paintbrush and then do ones in between. Whoops. And you can doctor them up a little bit. Like those ended up being shorter. So I'm doctoring them up a little bit. And you have yourself a nice pink blob. And that's okay. I already got paint on myself. You already got paint on yourself? Yep. Wear old clothes. Oh, it did. It spattered on you. <laughs> That's all right. It'll come out. I have newspaper and paper over the table so I can just get extra water out of my brush. So it doesn't, you know, I don't have to worry about anything special getting messed up. Now I'm going to let my flower dry. How you... I like these really little pebbles for bugs. I think they make really cute bugs. The first one I did, I did a ladybug, but I'm gonna do a blue ladybug this time, just for grins and giggles. So any color you want, get yourself some paint. If you're not sure, if you feel like you need to draw it ahead of time, you can use a pencil, you can use one of these Sharpies. Because, because there's a, um, I want to, don't want to paint too much, I'm going to decide the head's going to be over here. And I just need to know how much is going to be body and how much is going to be head. Now, if you get really into painting bugs, you can do lots of really fantastic creative things with bugs, with antennas and spots and zigzags and stripes and all kinds of things. I'm not gonna be that, that creative. <laughs> I'm just gonna take one of these brushes here and paint some blue on the body part. Sometimes the colors seem like they go on thin. If they seem like they go on thin, what? Let, put it aside and let it dry and then put another coat on. This is why, also why I do two or three at one time. I can't remember what I said. Did I tell you that I painted a whole bunch of these rocks in Key West and I went around and I put them on friends' steps and porches and I even put them on the counter at our favorite restaurant that was doing takeout. And no one knew I did it except for one person. One person, really good friend, said, I got your rocks. Other people say, oh, I had him post on Facebook. Oh, look what I found on my porch. So that was one of the neat things about this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, and get some black out. Whoa. Maybe better shake it up first. This is the black, yeah, this is the black. I don't have to use black, but I'm gonna paint, paint its head black. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I think I can do that without messing up my blue. But definitely have to let it dry before I try to do anything else. The good thing, I think acrylic paint dries pretty quickly. It does. Now, the only thing about acrylic paints, Mom, is if you get it on your clothes, <clears throat> Jesse, um, <laughs> it probably won't wash out if it dries. Okay. 
So, um, if it just gets on the surface of the cloth, you can sometimes pick it off. But it's a pretty permanent paint. It's not like watercolor that'll, that'll wash off. Okay, I'm letting these guys dry over here. So, while I'm letting them dry, I'm gonna take some red, and you can use any kind of acrylic. I'm gonna put a little puddle of red on my plate. Paper plates make great palettes because this is, this is a good red, if you wanna try this. Um, there's a couple ways you can do this. If you have a brush that has real stiff bristles and round in, you can use that. But if you have a soft brush, that works too. I'm gonna to use a soft brush, but I'm gonna to have to, um, this, this paint is thick, so I'm gonna thin it down a little bit. Now, this is how you make a perfect heart. Do you ever try to draw a heart like this and a heart like that and that the two sides never, Always never that. work. Never, even your best artist, they never work. Well, paint yourself two circles, side by side, and generally you can get them pretty close to the same. Now this brush has a square end, and that's not the best for painting circles, but if that's what you got, that's what you use. So paint yourself two circles. And I could use this brush, but it's got a lot of paint globbed on it. Can you see how all that paint's globbed on there? So I'm gonna try to get some of it off. I'm not sure what kind of, you're using a better brush. Then I'm gonna bring this down from the outside to the center and from the outside to the center and fill it in. And you can get yourself a pretty good even heart. You can, if you start touching it up too much, you'll probably booger it up a little bit, but if it's a little lopsided, you can add a little bit on the side. Oh, look at that. Did you get a good heart? I did. This is the easiest way I've found to make a heart. And this is the worst brush I've ever used to make a heart. But I got a pretty good heart. You know, we've all done the draw the heart and they're like really weird. Let's see your heart. Show Jessie. Perfect heart. She got herself a perfect heart. So it does work. So I'm gonna get a little bit different brush. I got another rounded mm -hmm. tip one. So. I think I'm gonna use this one. It's all just cause, and I'm gonna show you how to make a star. Now, when I painted this rock with the stars on and it says my star, I thought this is a good thing to give someone who's done something for you or someone who's done well in school or who, whatever, does something special. I painted the whole rock blue and let it dry. Remember the rocks that are drying over here? I let it dry and then I went back and I painted my stars and the yellow paint looked thin. So I let that dry and went back and put a second coat on it. So don't be afraid to put a second coat of paint. If it, if it looks thin, don't let it. <laughs> See what else is in there, Jess? That one looks like, I thought I felt this moving around in here. Yeah, it is moving around. I guess my top is stopped up. I did not go out. See, my yellow paint's pretty thin. Did you get anything out of I that? I did. It's a little. It's a little gold. That's little good. Gold you yellow. have a gold star. That's have a gold star. That's <laughs> wonderful. Okay. Now, how do you draw a star? Oh my! I draw Damn. a star. I make a point, and then I go over here. And then I go over here, and then I go down here. And that makes me my best star, right? Is that how you draw a star? Yeah. 
That's how you're gonna paint it. Okay. You're not gonna try to draw the, paint the outside. You're gonna do the same thing you do with a pencil. You're gonna draw your peak like that. Then you're gonna pick a spot over here somewhere, usually about halfway. And you're gonna come down to the bottom leg. And over here you pick a spot. And you go over to that. And down here. And you fill it in. And if one, like this one looks a little sad. One leg usually stubbier than the other. One stubbier <laughs> than the other. But then you can doctor it up a little bit. Yeah. Because you've got your main star on there. And if your paint is thin and you can see the streaks and strokes, you just um, wait for it to dry, put another coat on. And I'm gonna wait for this to dry because I think one of the things I'm gonna do is I would outline this maybe with my Sharpie. And if, you're rock, if you get landscape rocks that are real light colored, you could use colored Sharpies. Otherwise, your black Sharpie's gonna show up best. Okay. Is my flower dry enough? It is. I'm gonna take my little brush and I'm gonna take some more of my white. I can't use the pink I had because I messed it up when I put the black on there. And I'm gonna take some more of the, the pink that I did. I'm gonna make a darker shade. I want this much darker than what I used before, blob. See, cause you, I'm gonna paint it over top of the one I already got and I want it to show up. What, whoops, what I'm aiming to do is paint these little lines that look like the little lines you might have in flower petals, okay? This is what I'm aiming to do. And where I, I had my middle, I might have to remind myself. Oops, that doesn't look dark enough against there. Put some more in there. Play with color, mix color, enjoy working with color. And then, you know, on the petals we started on the outside, on this we're gonna start in the middle. And I'm just gonna put my tip down and I'm just gonna flip it out like this. I can tell you right now, your grandmother, your aunt, your sister are gonna love getting flowers on a rock. Now, I'm gonna rinse that out, blot out the water. Get some more of this darker pink that really doesn't have much in the, the white in it and I'm gonna go right over it. And I don't care if this is wet. Now, I cared if, if the petals were wet, but not this. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try to go different places than I did with the lighter pink. And I'm just gonna pull, just pull your brush, little strokes like that. And you can do two or three different colors of of the, you don't even have to do all of the darker shade of the color of your flower. Let's see here. I think I have some purple here. I'm gonna put a little purple on my flower. Why not? It's it's a it's a make believe flower. It's not one you're gonna find on any of the books. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of purple here. I'm gonna get the water out of my brush because it's gonna thin down the color too much. And see how my brush looks like it doesn't have many water dripping in it? Well, I'm gonna take and just get a little bit of purple and just for grins and giggles, put a little bit of purple in there. Not a lot. And my other color is still wet, so it'll kind of blend a little bit. It won't be like straight out of the bottle purple. And you don't need a lot. 
And that's the hardest thing to do. Know when to stop. I'm going to stop. I haven't gotten Jessie started yet. How's she doing? Oh, she's doing it. Look at her flower. Her flower's pretty. Just a little. Just flip it. Yeah, just flick your, flick your brush. See? Now, I did not give Jessie any lessons ahead of time, so she's just... Going rogue. She's just doing it. Just a, just a tiny little bit, don't you? <laughs> okay. Okay. Put that aside to dry. Get your bug. Have a bug. Now, I would suggest, this is marker time. I'm doing a modified ladybug. So what I want to do is put a split down here where her wings split, and then I want to put dots on here. And I don't mind if they're black, but you could also, I would draw this, what I think I'm going to do since I got that paint there, I'm going to draw her wings split, and then I'm going to pick one of these other colors to make her dot. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. Come sort of out of the middle of her, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's a six. If you want a thicker line, go over it twice, but you don't have to. Then I would take a relatively small brush and whatever color you want your dots. Hmm. I got this pretty pink. Why not? Figure, kind of look at it and say, and if you're not sure, draw, put a dot with a pencil. I want a, a little round blob there. And I'll tell you something else you can use to paint dots with, Q-tips. You can take a Q-tip and do this. And the other thing you can do, oh, I almost forgot to tell you. Take the end of your paintbrush. This will give you dots. You have to kind of load it with paint each time and keep it straight up and down. But you can get yourself some pretty perfect dots with the end of your paintbrush. How about that? Don't forget to wash the paint off your brush to the end of your other end of your brush as well. And then you need eyes. We're still letting the flower dry. So I'm gonna take my smaller brush, or you can use, if you've got a big fat, oops, not one with an end like that, but a big, I'm looking at the end. Look at the oh, end. Yeah. I'll let you use this one. I'm gonna take, cause I want bigger eyes. I'm so gonna. Put my eyes on with a bigger end of the paintbrush. Ah, I think this one might have boogered up a little bit. Well, then you got to fix it. You got it. You got a paintbrush for eyes. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna try to pick it, fix it with my brush. I'm gonna make a movals. I made mine like two eggs coming together at the nose. Oh, cute. That's because I had one that went goofed. One that goofed. Now, I just, I think I touched my pink, so be careful you don't touch stuff that's wet. Let's put this aside to dry. And to get back to my flower. Now, my flower is pretty dry, although there is a few little wet, shiny spots I can see. I can wait a little longer, but I'm going to kind of push this a little bit. I'm going to take the end of my paintbrush and get some yellow and just put some yellow dots. Doesn't need a lot. 
and there's my center. I just used three. If you, you can make a bigger center or a smaller center. This one, I used five yellow dots and an orange dot in the middle. You can do whatever you want to in the middle of your flower. But your flower is pretty much done then. Just has to get good and dry. If you want to write, I love you, Grandma, or to my Aunt Susie, who's special, you can write stuff on here with your marker. I only would suggest that you practice. If you want to write, I love you, practice it and see if you can, how big you want it, whether you want something fancy, whatever you want to do, practice it on newspaper or rough paper or your plate before you do it on your rock, okay? You're less likely to have an accident. Now I'm gonna go back to my little bug because the only thing I gotta do yet is put the center of his eyes. And since I made his eyes sort of cross-eyed, I'm gonna take the end of my brush so I can get some black dots and put them towards the end. Ah! If I decide that black is too big, I let it dry, paint over it with white, and do it again. It's very forgiving. How's your bug? Wiggle, 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 wiggle. <laughs> so, that, that gives you a couple things you can do to start with. You can paint. You got your, do some things that are easy, then let your imagination go and have fun with it. I think you're gonna really, there's lots of things you can do. Um, after I finish my talk, there's gonna be a series of pictures to show you what other people have done to paint their rocks. Have fun. <laughs>